Nice. Welcome back. It's time to answer an age old question. Can you get good quality, airplane grade quality, from a company like Send, Cut, Send? Let's find out. Okay, here's your quick explainer. SendCutSend.com is a service where you can upload files like DXFs, DWGs, AI, EPS, STEP, or STP files. You send it to them, they give you an instant quote on their website for different materials from acrylics to plastics to metals, and then you buy it and they just send it to you. Send them something, they cut something, they send it back. I've used this service for many years and now I'm finally getting to use it on this project. I do have tools at home to do prototypes, but I just went straight to this part. I was pretty confident in the skills that I've learned from 3D scanning. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, we got this package from Send Cut Send. It's pretty big, so it must be a pretty substantial part of the project that I'm doing on this airplane. But this package right here from Send Cut Send is unmolested, as in I have not opened it yet. What you're about to see is no modifications, no deburring, no nothing. I'm gonna open this box, I'm gonna show you what's in it. Snacks, stickers. Pretty cool. Got a flyer, got my order details right there. The part you're waiting for is this. This is the instrument panel for the Bonanza, this airplane behind me. It's actually the left side instrument panel or the pilot side instrument panel. And you don't know it yet, but no part of this panel removes structure from the airplane. Because I've 3D scanned the existing panel, I've been able to line up every hole as it is, so I won't have to re-drill anything on the airplane, so no structural modifications at all. But I've also picked up mounting areas or mounting points from the floating panel that we're gonna remove, the non-structural floating panel, so this has something to bolt up to. So we've got an area for a clock over here, airspeed, turn coordinator, there's the HSI. This one is gonna be the, um, actually, what is this one? Oh, that's the attitude indicator. Um, altimeter, VSI. Uh, the STEC 50, this slot right here is for the uh, manifold pressure gauge and fuel flow, RPM, and then the JPI 730 or 830 goes here twisted to the side. Uh, landing gear, up and down lights will go in here. Flaps up and down will go here. The GPSS module will go here. A slot here to pass through the push to talk cable that's passing through the instrument panel so I don't have to cut it and resolder the cables. We'll just pass it through there and put a cosmetic cover over this when we're done. ELT will go there. The uh, magnetometer um, switch for the HSI will go there, vacuum gauge will go there, uh, and then the yoke goes right in this cutout. So I've put a lot of thought into how this goes. Oh, there's an enunciator panel here, some LEDs here. Avionics master switches are here, and um, there are a couple extra spots here for future switches and push buttons and that kind of thing. So we're gonna open this up and go see how it fits in the airplane. But great quality, great packaging. Um, Send Cut Send has vacuumed this down and there we go. Now to get this faster, I decided to skip having them deburr the edges, but they're using a laser cutter, I think, to cut this stuff. So it's actually not that bad. What I'll do is just take my deburring tool and just really whiz around it really quickly so it doesn't cut me um, as I manipulate the, uh, the parts. There's a little bit of slag. You see, it um, might be hard to see, but this is the backside, which I'm not too worried about, but there's a little bit of slag 
from the laser cutting or the plasma cutting, whatever uh, situation they use. So we'll go ahead and clean those up and um, go dry fit it in the airplane. Um, and if it all aligns, we can get ready to re reassemble this part of the airplane. So this is nice. That's sharp right there. It's sharp on the back, pretty smooth on the front. So I'll go deeper all these edges. This is non-structural. This is just floating ahead of the panel that we have in there right now. And that's the, uh, that's the type of work we're gonna do so we don't have to involve more um, modifications that are necessary. Keep the airplane simple until the future where I'm maybe ready to redo this but I can do this on my own, so it's pretty affordable, pretty cost, cost effective. Now on the front side, that's smooth. That's pretty much completely smooth on the front side. It's just that the, the back needs to be deburred, so let's go do that. Now if you've never seen one before, this is what a deburring tool looks like. It's just the blade that's free to swivel here, and you will just drag this along the metal that you're trying to clean up, and it will get rid of all those rough edges. I'll try to see if I can do this. Uh, let's try to put the camera down. There's the part, and it's essentially just using this to go around the edge and clean it up. I don't want to gouge into the metal, but even just me doing that pass has smoothed that edge right there to where the slag has been chipped away. So pretty cheap deburring tool that I got from Amazon years and years ago, but it, it works just like the expensive stuff. Let's go clean this up. Nice. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, and that's to test fit this panel into the airplane. And I, I did a, a, a cardboard prototype once just to check basic fitment and make sure everything would align. And the alignment was a little bit off because I wasn't paying attention to where the existing instruments were. I was just going to modify the existing panel or cut it. Um, and then, you know, do a structural mod, a 337 essentially, to say I modified the panel. But that won't be necessary anymore because we're not actually doing anything to the panel. We're not touching the panel that exists behind, uh, behind this new panel. So, if you look here, there are a few things that are still in the way that I'll have to clean up. Um, there are little placards I'm going to have to take off and there are screws that I'm going to have to take out for the JPI. I'm going to remove that placard right there. But nothing else is getting touched on this panel. So I'm going to pick up on a mounting point here. I'm going to pick up on a different mounting point somewhere else. And um, there's going to be adequate structural support for everything that we want to put on this panel. And I did a mock-up of this right side already. The center stack fits fine. Um, this side fits fine. Um, the problem with this side is that I wanted to move the GDL88 down a little bit more. So I took out a row of circuit breakers and moved the G GDL88 down so it wouldn't be too close to the glare shield on top. But let's see how this thing fits and uh, we'll keep moving. Okay, now that we're up on the airplane, I haven't tried this yet. Let's see how it fits into place. We slide the push to talk cable through the little slot. And it looks perfect. It looks perfect. Let's look at this. So the existing holes, and you can see if I move it around, there's still a structure under it, but those will all line up perfectly so we won't have to modify the existing panel 
these holes here will line up perfectly. The gear and flap lights will line up perfectly. So yeah, it looks like our little experiment is going to work out fine. Let me get some hardware in here and um, so I can let the panel go and take a closer look. Okay, I'm finally hands-free of the panel because I've got it uh, locked down in a couple different positions. This was an existing mounting point. Um, there is a rod, a support rod that goes back to the firewall that's here. There's also another support rod here. And I picked up on both of those points right here and here. And then we're gonna have a few more mounting locations like here, um, there, there, there uh, and what I'm trying to show you is there's no modification required to the sub panel the panel that's behind uh, like this for example this is the master avionics um, switch it's two circuit breakers back there that control the avionics and I didn't drill this panel I just passed them through and kind of finger you know made that finger tight just for fitment's sake the same thing here, that's the gear down indicator. Gear up, flaps up, flaps down. Um, that's gonna be the GPSS steering button that I talked about before. So as you can see, and you can see it really well with these holes, you're seeing the existing panel back there, right? And mine is just floating ahead of it. This right here is you know, the mounting hole, and they line up perfectly there, perfectly there, there, uh, here. So only right here and over matters right these uh these ones over here really don't because there was nothing behind it it was just a floating panel so those are lining up um those are going to line up fine um manifold pressure is going to go back in here uh over here is where like the suction gauge goes and as you can see same same story the mounting holes there there here there they all line up so when, it, when I'm ready to put everything back together again, it will just, it'll just fit. And I won't have to, I'm sorry, I'm doing this with one hand, but the best I can do. Um, I won't have to drill anything. I won't have to modify the substructure um, anyway. If I were to go a little bit further with this project, I would just completely remove this bit but I don't know at this point if it's a structural bit or not, so I'm keeping this in place until I get an answer for that. Maybe we can redo this project in the future. Um, probably not, but this is where we are. And I think I've made a lot of great progress today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, call it quits for now. Just checking over a few other things. I gotta make a hole down here, I see. But yeah. I'm feeling good about this. I hope you are too. And we will see you soon. Okay, testing, testing, one, two. This is the microphone I use. It's like $10 on Amazon. Hopefully it's good enough for everyone out there. Anyways, really just coming from the editing desk to say, wow, summer is, is over, right? We've gone through an incredible summer 2025 lots has happened we've done a lot of flying we've gone on some trips we've met some new people we've done some great things i wanted to highlight just a few things that are going on right now my mom has been with me for a couple months now getting some cataract surgeries done on both eyes and i'm happy to report that she's fine and she's about to head back to saint kitts you might know that i'm from the caribbean i'm from saint kitts and nevis tiny twin island nation uh, where it's just beautiful the people are incredible and they really made me what i am today but she's about to head out head back to saint kitts so that's update number one update number two you may want to go out and check on the feeds that you follow the channels that you follow because for some reason youtube has been dropping likes or just not pushing content the way that it used to it seems like views are way down and it may just be because people are into summer and having fun and out there uh, doing other things other than watching youtube but the numbers from across the youtube sphere especially for small content creators has been down and it seems as if the content's just not getting out there so it's more important right now than ever to share like subscribe not just here but with all the other folks that you follow 
the Rusty Pilot channel, the Alpha Kilo Warrior channel, Rust Can Fly. You really want to go out there and follow all of those channels and really uh, push them as hard as they can, uh, as hard as you can, because we need people to experience this content. That's what we're doing it for. We want to share the word. We really need eyeballs on some of this stuff. You might learn something. Hopefully safety is in mind, so you're a little bit more safe by watching the content. But we're doing it so we can share it with you, the community. And right now, the tools that we're using are not necessarily pushing the content the way that we'd like it to be pushed. So if you can, just go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe, and then pop over to another small YouTube creator or large YouTube creator in the aviation space or whatever it is you do, bocce or, I don't know, table tennis or building Legos. Go find those people watch their content, hit that like button, and uh, let's wrap up 2020, uh, 2025 summer as best as we can. Oh, have you bought an airplane yet? Time is ticking by. That's one less flying summer that you have to fly an airplane. Anyways, I'm not going to guilt you into it. Thanks for watching the content. I'm going to talk to you all later.